Hi, this is Eric with Parts Factor. Today we're going to show you how to disassemble your GE refrigerator. Please reference the timestamps in the description below to jump to certain sections of the refrigerator. In this video, our aim is to show you how to disassemble your refrigerator. If you want to know more about each individual part, you can check out our other videos. First, we will start with the dual water inlet valve. The water valve is located beneath this panel. Start by lifting the door bin up and out, then remove the two screws holding the panel in place using a quarter inch nut driver, and pull the panel away from the door. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Remove the water line clips using a needle nose pliers. The two clips on the right are the same size, while the one on the left is slightly larger. To remove the water lines, press the tabs in on the valves while pulling out on the water lines. Be careful, as water may spill from the lines. Then, depress the locking tab on the dispenser refrigerator housing and slide the valve to the left, then out. Next, we will be removing the rear water inlet valve. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect the power to the refrigerator. With access to the back of the refrigerator, move the screws holding the compressor access cover in place using a 5 16 inch nut driver. Then slide the cover up to remove. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the screw holding the water inlet valve in place. Then, gently tilt up and pull the valve away from the refrigerator housing, being careful as it is still connected. Disconnect the electrical connector by pulling firmly. Then, using a needle nose pliers, remove the water line clip. Remove the water line by pressing on the tab while pulling out on the line. Keep some paper towels handy as water will likely leak from the valve. Next, we will be removing the water filter. On this refrigerator, the filter is located on the upper left wall on the inside of the refrigerator. Once you've located the filter, depress the locking tab on the door to open it up. Next, inspect the color of the filter holder. If you have a black filter holder, start by swinging the cartridge outward until you hear the click of the cartridge holder engaging the bracket. Then, turn the filter counterclockwise one quarter turn to release it. If you have a gray filter holder like ours, do not try to twist the filter as it will damage the refrigerator. If your filter holder is gray like this one, to remove the filter, start by rotating the filter outwards until it stops. Then gently pull the filter towards you to remove it. A small amount of water may drip from the filter. Next, we will be removing the LED light. Since we will be working with the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect power to the refrigerator. To remove, gently pry the light away from the refrigerator's housing using a flat head screwdriver. Then, disconnect the electrical connector. Next, we will be removing the mullion hinge spring. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. With the left door open, start by flipping the mullion and removing these two Torx screws. Next, rotate this hinge back to gain access to the electrical connector. Then, disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Now, firmly press in an upward motion on both hinges to release the mullion from the door. This may require some force. Next, remove the spring by firmly grasping on the end that is inserted into the mullion, pushing it out of the hole until it's released, followed by the other end. Next, we will be removing the ice maker. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. With the left door open, pull down on the ice door latch to access the ice maker compartment. Remove the ice bucket by lifting up on the bottom, tilting out, and pulling down to remove. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove this screw on the electrical cover. Then, pull on the bottom of the cover, tilt, and down to remove. Then remove the temperature sensor. Next, disconnect the two electrical connectors by depressing the locking tabs.
Now with a 5 16th inch nut driver, remove this screw on the ice maker. Next, lift up and out to remove the ice maker. Next, we will be removing the dispenser lever actuator. For this repair, unplug or disconnect power to the refrigerator. First, remove the two Phillips screws on the bottom of the user interface control assembly. Now, slide the control assembly down and then rotate out the right side. Be careful as it's still connected by wires. Next, disconnect the three electrical connectors by depressing the locking tabs. Now, remove the wires secured in the ice funnel. Next, remove the water line from the ice funnel by pushing it up. Then, depress the locking tabs on each side of the ice funnel to remove it. You may need to pivot the ice funnel to do this. Carefully pry on the right locking tab on the dispenser lever while pivoting it. Then place your finger behind the other tab, compress it, and pull it towards you. Next, lift up and out on the lever to remove it. Be careful not to lose the spring as it will need to be reused. Next, we will be removing the main control board. Since we will be working with the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect the power to the refrigerator. With access to the back of the refrigerator, remove the screws holding the main control board cover in place using a quarter inch nut driver. Because the main control board is connected to so many wiring harnesses, take a picture to reference later to make installation easier. Then disconnect all electrical connectors by depressing the locking tabs. Next, remove the screw holding the control board in place. Remove the control board by swinging the left side out and then pulling gently forward. Next, we will be removing the compressor start relay and overload. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect the power to the refrigerator. With access to the back of the refrigerator, remove the screws holding the compressor access cover in place using a 5 16 inch nut driver. Then, slide the cover up to remove. Next, remove the clip holding the capacitor in place by pressing it in, lifting the hook up and out, lowering it to remove the lower hook, and pulling it out to remove. Then, pull the capacitor away from the start relay. Remove the start relay from the compressor by pulling firmly. Then, using needle nose pliers, remove the electrical connectors from the start relay. Next, we will be removing the condenser fan motor. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect the power to the fridge. With access to the back of the refrigerator, remove the screws holding the compressor access cover in place using a 5 16 inch nut driver. Then, slide the cover up to remove. The condenser fan motor assembly is located here. Next, disconnect the two electrical connectors by depressing the locking tabs. Then, peel the foam up and gently pull the refrigerant tube forward and down. With the refrigerant tube out of the way, pull the motor housing towards you to free it from the locking tabs. Then lift the assembly up and swing the bottom out. This will require a great deal of effort. Push the top away from the condenser coil and pull the fan assembly out of the machine compartment. Next we will be removing the fresh food evaporator fan motor. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect the power to the refrigerator. Start by opening the doors. Then pull the drawers forward, lift up, and pull out to remove. Remove the crisper frame by lifting up and sliding forward. Be careful as the glass panel will come out with the assembly. Remove the deli drawer by pulling forward, tilting up, and sliding out. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the front deli cover in place. Then, lift the cover up, being careful as it is still connected by wires. 
disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Next, remove the rear cover by lifting it up and out. With the sides fully closed, remove the two screws holding them in place using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then, remove the slides. Remove the screws holding the side supports in place using a quarter inch nut driver. Then, slide them forward to remove. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently pry the fan connector cover away from the evaporator cover. Then, using a quarter inch nut driver, remove these five screws. Then, disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Remove the cover. Next, carefully peel the felt tape up and away from the evaporator cover and slide the electrical connector through the gap. Remove the fan assembly by pressing up on the grommets to release them from the retainers. Then, stretch the two tabs on the bottom while pulling the fan in the opposite direction. This allows the rubber to stretch so that it becomes thin enough to pass through the holes in the evaporator housing. Remove the gasket from the fan using the same technique. Stretch the tab so that the rubber becomes thin enough to pass through. Next, we will be removing the fresh fruit defrost heater. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect power to the refrigerator. Because the defrost heater is encased in glass, use extreme caution when removing because it may be broken. Start by opening the doors. Then, pull the doors forward, lift up, and pull out to remove. Remove the crisper frame by lifting up and sliding forward. Be careful as the glass panel will come out with the assembly. Remove the deli drawer by pulling forward, tilting up, and sliding out. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the front deli cover in place. Then, lift the cover up, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Next, remove the rear cover by lifting it up and out. With the sides fully closed, remove the two screws holding them in place using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then remove the slides. Remove the screws holding the side supports in place using a quarter inch nut driver. Then slide them forward to remove. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently pry the fan connector cover away from the evaporator cover. Then, using a quarter inch nut driver, remove these five screws. Then, disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Remove the cover. There are two electrical connectors on the defrost heater. One here, and one here. To remove them, pull firmly with needle nose pliers. This will require some force. The defrost heater is held in place by two clips and two retaining tabs. 
Using a needle nose pliers, gently pull on the clips to bend them so that they are clear of the coil. Next, carefully bend the retaining tabs to release the defrost heater. Then using a needle nose pliers, firmly lift up on the drain heater probe. This will require a great deal of force. With the probe clear, remove the heater. Next, we will be removing the defrost thermostat. Note that to remove this part, you'll have to cut it out using wire cutters. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect power to the refrigerator. Start by opening the doors. Then, pull the drawers forward, lift up, and pull out to remove. Remove the crisper frame by lifting up and sliding forward. Be careful as the glass panel will come out with the assembly. Remove the deli drawer by pulling forward, tilting up, and sliding out. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the two screws holding the front deli cover in place. Then, lift the cover up, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Next, remove the rear cover by lifting it up and out. With the sides fully closed, remove the two screws holding them in place using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then, remove the slides. Remove the screws holding the side supports in place using a quarter inch nut driver. Then slide them forward to remove. Using a flathead screwdriver, gently pry the fan connector cover away from the evaporator cover. Then, using a quarter inch nut driver, remove these five screws. Then, disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Remove the cover. To remove the defrost thermostat from the refrigerant tube, gently press on the retaining clip. Using a wire cutter, cut the wires, being sure to leave enough wire to place the new thermostat in place. Next, we will be removing the freezer evaporator fan motor. Since we will be working with the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect power to the refrigerator. Start by opening the freezer door, then pull the upper drawer forward and tilt it up and out. Remove the lower drawer by pushing it back slightly, then tilt the front up and out. In order to make filming this easier, we will be removing the freezer door. You do not have to remove the freezer door to complete this repair. Using a 3 8 inch nut driver, remove these six screws. Tilt the door forward and lift up and out. Insert a flathead screwdriver into the retaining slot and pry the tab up and out. Then, slide the cover down to remove. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tab. Then, pry the locking tab on the evaporator cover and pull the fan assembly out starting with the right side. It is easy to damage the felt when removing it from the original motor. Because of this, we suggest replacing the felt as well. Carefully peel the felt away from the fan motor. Next, we will be removing the freezer defrost heater. Start by opening the freezer door, then pull the upper drawer forward and tilt it up and out. Remove the lower drawer by pushing it back slightly, then tilt the front up and out. Then, using a 3 8 inch nut driver, remove these six screws.
tilt the door forward, and lift up and out. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the two bolts holding the evaporator cover in place. Then pull the evaporator cover towards you, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tabs. If the cover is frozen in place, open the freezer door and unplug the refrigerator, allowing it to thaw. There are two electrical connectors on the defrost heater. One here, and one here. To remove them, pull firmly with needle nose pliers. This will require some force. The defrost heater is held in place by two clips and two retaining tabs. Using a needle nose pliers, gently pull on the clips to bend them so that they are clear of the coil. Then push towards the rear of the freezer compartment to free the other end. Next, carefully bend the retaining tabs to release the defrost heater. Then using a needle nose pliers, firmly lift up on the drain heater probe. This will require a great deal of force. With the probe clear, remove the heater. Next we will be removing the temperature sensor thermistor. Note that to remove this part you'll have to cut it out using wire cutters. Since we will be working on the refrigerator's electrical components, disconnect power to the refrigerator. Start by opening the freezer door. Then pull the upper drawer forward and tilt it up and out. Remove the lower drawer by pushing it back slightly, then tilt the front up and out. Using a quarter inch nut driver, remove the two bolts holding the evaporator cover in place. Then pull the evaporator cover towards you, being careful as it is still connected by wires. Disconnect the electrical connector by depressing the locking tabs. If the cover is frozen in place, open the freezer door and unplug the refrigerator, allowing it to thaw. Today we will be replacing the freezer evaporator thermistor because it is the one that most commonly fails. Remove the thermistor from the refrigerant tube and separate it from the clip. The steps to replace the other thermistors are the same shown in this video once you have access to the thermistor. Using a wire cutter, remove the old thermistor by cutting it leaving an inch or so of wire for testing. If the thermistor isn't bad, you won't need to replace it. That's it for today's video, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below, and please consider subscribing.